Okay, let's talk for a minute about load balancing. Obviously, there are plugins that'll do any and everything, but there reaches a point where you've got some diminishing returns. So one thing I recommend you do is you pick and choose your plugins carefully. Make sure that the benefit you're going to get from loading them outweighs the overhead loss you're going to suffer when you when you do load it. Uh, one thing I do, and this, this is kind of a little bit of a cheat, um, but let me show you uh, one thing that we can do. Um, and this is will help you identify how much overhead you're losing. One of the first things I do is go into the footer and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to add a comment uh, within the code that is going to, in, in the comment itself, it's going to get the number of queries that this particular page is running and how long it took to load. So if I do this, and I turn all my plugins off and then I refresh the page within the body of the source code uh, in other words if I right click and say view source um, and I scroll all the way to the bottom I'm gonna see exactly how long it took to load that page. I ran 105 queries and it took 1.054 seconds to build this page. So if I do this to begin with and I throw this in Excel and then I add another plugin and I go refresh it and I look to see did it change? Did it change a lot or a little? If I if I keep looking at this and keep a Excel spreadsheet putting what my my queries are, my time is for each plugin that I add, I'll be able to tell what's causing me a slowdown and you know where I've got diminishing returns. So first thing you do is go put that uh, code in. And again, that code is down below this video. Uh, you should see a sample. Just copy it into the bottom of your footer. Anywhere that appears right before the, the closing body tag. So load this up before you begin installing all your plugins. And after each new plugin, record what you're getting. Here's a sample of that. Um, I just start with the blog, what my initial load is, how many queries, how many seconds for each one. And then as I add each one, uh, document how many queries it's now running and how many seconds it takes to load. If you see one that jumps it from 82 to 180, that's too big a jump. Really take a look at that plugin. If you, um, if the benefits you're getting from that plugin are not enormous, it may not be worth the overhead that you're going to be experiencing. Remember, by by overhead, I mean every piece of JavaScript that's loaded, every style sheet that has to be rendered, um, each time you add something new, you're adding what it has to do in order to render that page. And that's before we even get into images. And images take up their own space and uh, really need to be optimized their own method. Um, I do recommend that you really take a strong look at what the benefit is before you load it. Um, in other words, antivirus, I will load even if it slowed me down to a crawl. The biggest reason is it will prevent me from being hacked. And if I am hacked, it'll let me know immediately so that I can reverse the process it's done. Now, back type connect, I'm not going to enable it until I've done my load balancing um, because this is one that has a little bit of an overhead. Now, the benefit to me is it's a quick way to bring in a lot of comments. In other words, if you tweet your post or you publish it uh, and it appears on Facebook and other people, you know, are... are referencing those links, you could get a lot of, quote, comments that could land on your blog very, very quickly. And that gives you a form of social proof. So um, Backtype Connect is one I'll use, but not until I've got my primaries loaded first. Uh, that's the other thing um, that I recommend on load balancing, is, is you spend a little time turning things on and off, do different combinations, behave differently. Um, and I mentioned earlier that one thing you want to do is look at plugins that do double duty. A perfect example of that is Headspace. Uh, the predominant reason is Headspace actually um, replaces several different plugins. If you take a look at the uh, site modules that are available to you in Headspace, you'll see there um, are things, uh, there's an engine built in for Google Analytics 
Aperture, which is an add-on that brings some really great content options to your web page. 103 Bs, Crazy Egg, these are uh, tracking utilities. You can disable visual editing. You can turn on FeedBurner, Stats Pro. Again, just look at all of these options, and these are really pretty neat features uh, that you don't have to add an additional plugin in order to accommodate. Headspace is already being loaded, the engine is already being loaded, so you can go turn on and set the options for a lot of these. Do find plugins that do double duty, that allow you to uh, bring things in and use them only as you need. Um, Headspace has another nice feature that I like, and that's the ability um, to bring in conditionally page-specific plugins. In other words, let's say I load a plugin for uh, contact forms. Well, I don't want to add the overhead to every single page in my blog. I only need the overhead, in other words, the style sheets and the JavaScript. I only need that on the actual contact me page. So I can load it and not activate it. But by turning on page specific plugins, when I go to edit the contact me page, I can turn on that plugin just for that page. So again, this uh, headspace will allow you to help uh, reduce your overhead uh, on each individual page. So I do put page specific themes and plugins over here on the advanced tab and when I'm editing there's a little new link that's added underneath called advanced. I can click it and turn on or turn off JavaScript uh, CSS or plugins based on what I need. Double duty uh, plugins, explore them, take a look at uh, the additional options that they offer when you go looking for plugins. Doing more than one thing isn't always better, uh, depends on how it renders it, so do uh, record your load times. Uh, make sure that the benefit you're getting is worth the overhead. Okay, so that's uh, that ends this section on load balancing and plugins that do double duty. This excerpt was provided as a courtesy to my YouTube subscribers. To see the rest of the video, please visit its home page by clicking the link in the description.